Mel everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Everybody, Cantonese Cat here. MSTR, what do I think? Is it a bull trend? Of course it is. There's really no doubt. The interesting thing is this is the monthly chart for MSTR. It has flipped the tank indication here from resistance to support for many months and ended up pushing up further as a result, right? It even front ran Bitcoin. It ran even faster than Bitcoin did. So where do we go from here? I think that's the question. Right? I think a lot of people are re really kind of worried. Like, where are we at at this cycle right now? Are we going to end up you know, needing to kind of think about when to take profits, things like that, right? So first of all, you think about seasonality. MSTR tend to burn out a little bit faster than like, you know, miners, than Bitcoin, things like that. Bitcoin made even a little bit of a higher high in November. MSTR ended up burning up here. Now, I'm not saying the cycle is going to be the exact same cycle as last cycle, but if you're talking about seasonality, you want to kind of compare the two cycles, which I do think they're a little bit different, actually. But if you compare the two cycles, I do think that currently November, you can compare it to this November candle over here. I don't know whether or not it's going to have like this big giant bullish candle to the sky kind of thing, right? But I would say that where we are at this cycle may be a little bit more similar between these two. We had a consolidation period over here, kind of like we have a consolidation period over here when we strategy start announcing they're buying Bitcoin, right? So I think we had a couple of really green candles. We had a couple of really green candles. Maybe it's start, it maybe it's starting the time to kind of pay attention to think about maybe at some point the bull trend is going to get getting exhausted. Initially, I really thought that the bull trend was exhausting based on the fact that it went nowhere for six months because it was starting to have its low bullish bank kind of curl up, right? Kind of like it did over here when the trend got exhausted, but it just got re-expanded on high volume. So it's probably going to keep going up on its final leg. The question is, how far is the final leg going to go? Are we going to worry now that you have two um, monthly candle way outside the upper voltage band? Are we like here, right? Maybe, or maybe it can go up higher. So what, what what can we do to try to figure out where it is? Well, let's kind of see on maybe on the monthly chart, maybe look at the Bollinger Band here. Maybe you can try and extrapolate between current uh, location right here versus the last cycle. We're starting to have the Bollinger Band expansion again, right? Over here, we have Bollinger Band expansion that has brought the weekly Bollinger Band all the way down to like the negatives. And that completely got contracted. If we would have bought, if you would have like, bought and then you were sold at when the Bollinger Band started to contract right there, which is going to be the week of uh, March 2025. Sorry, March uh, March 25th, not 2025. March 25th, right? What happened in March 25th is right at the peak right there. It, it had a wick right there, right? So you bought at the peak of the uh, lower Bollinger Band, then that would have been the, the top right there, right? Same thing over here. Where's the peak right here? Around February 8th, 2021, right? Where's the peak down here? Around Fe February 16th, 2021, right? So if you would have been able to kind of pick up and if you really wanted to like just not lose any money, if you're worried, then just wait for the bonus band to expand on the weekly and then just pick up whenever it really starts to turn and be like, okay, time to take profit, goodbye. You know, that could be one way to do it. It's got a very impressive bull trend right now, up and down. Looks like it wants to continue to go up. Does it mean that just because we're way outside of the bullish trend, does it mean that we have to come down and you know, retrace back to the mean? No, because if you look back at the previous cycle, you have a very similar location where we're at right now, as opposed to the last cycle. I'm going to turn the volume here so you can see a little bit better. You have a very similar location over here with the Bollinger Band expansion after a period of consolidation, right? And it's just kind of riding up a Bollinger Band until the point that it just got way outside of the Bollinger Band here, has a big wake above. Where are we at? Maybe here, right? And what do we do? Well, we kind of came back, go sideways, close the gap here in this particular case. And it's kind of gone sideways for a few weeks before just pushing up higher, right? Are we going to end up doing the same thing? Kind of just go sideways from here, maybe close the gap here for a couple of weeks and just keep going higher. Even if Bitcoin goes up higher, Michael strategy is a little bit overextended, right? Like, I mean, like, what is Bitcoin doing? Well, at least it's touching the upper, the upper bullish band. <laughs> Michael strategy is not even really doing that. Like, the strategy is just like, yeah, I'm just in space, right? So there's a potential for a strategy, and it's just kind of, kind of go sideways here for, for about a few weeks before going up higher. Or you can just keep on going up. I mean, I don't know. But I just see uh, a, lot, a lot of similarities in terms of where we are here versus here. That's kind of where I'm seeing at, um, where, where we're at right now. Now, if you're talking about some people, a lot of people are looking at taking profits from um, looking at Fibonacci levels. So let's take a look at Fibonacci levels. I'm not really able to draw a good Fibonacci from the last cycles because they didn't really buy Bitcoin until here. So the fundamental of the market strategy company has completely changed, right? So there's not really any like fit levels I can really extrapolate to 
that's going to be able to be relatable to this cycle. But I can do at least from last cycle top here and to last cycle bottom, and I already did that. This is a lock scale fib. And you can see that right now we're getting rejected almost perfectly as at the 1.6, sorry, 1.414 um, fit level there, right? So that is potentially um, an area where you might end up kind of going sideways for a few weeks before you're really able to push up to 1.618, which I think it will do, right? I think it will get there. And then eventually, once you push through 1.618, I think that some of the higher levels like 2 and 2.272 are possible. I would probably start thinking about taking profits depending on what the trend looks like once it gets up there, right? There are two ways to do it. One is you can take your profits on the way up. The other one is you, you don't have to time the top. You just let it run however you want it to run. And then you start to take the profits down below, right? It's probably going to end up bouncing. Let's say, for example, if it goes to two, what generally happens is if you don't take profit here, if you made a lot of gains from down here, you just want to see how far it goes. You can make profits up here it might come back down, bounce from another level and it might bounce up a little bit and you might end up taking profit right around there, right? That's also another way to do it if you're looking for these like lower highs when you see a very, very much of a trend exhaustion, even though people are going to be like, oh no, it's just going to cool down, it's going to keep going, make another higher high. Um, that might be time for you to kind of consider exiting. It can still make a higher high, right? It can still make a higher high, but you can consider exiting at that point. The other thing I was just showing you too was already what I was talking about, the Bollinger Band contraction. Where you see low bullish band on weekly for for a very impulsive stock market strategy like contract, maybe that was a time to kind of consider and start to take profits, right? Because it might have been a little bit toppy, um, or you can just start taking profit on the way up. You're like, oh, not only is it going to get like 540, this is a little bit too much. Take some profit, leave a moon back, take some profit here around you know 1200, 1300, take some profit around 2400 just in case if it gets there. Um, but I probably wouldn't be like that. Optimistic. I don't think it's going to hit like five. It would be surprising to me if it ends up hitting up some of these higher targets, right? Uh, but yeah, um, signs for trend exhaustion um, with the Bollinger Band. That's one uh, method. But honestly, like nobody really knows where the top is going to be. Nobody really knows where the top is going to be. You can extrapolate based on what the top for Bitcoin is going to be. Now, Bitcoin top has a lot of different tools to um, to to try to find the top, right? But before I even get to Bitcoin, you just get back to my strategy here. I can do a GAN square, and that can also kind of help you to kind of give you a little bit more an idea in terms of where to take profit. So if I do a weekly um, GAN square from, uh, let me see, 360 and 10. Let me see if I can do that here real quick. 360 is right there. 360 is right there. And I'm going to do a 10. What is it going to give me? Let's see here. Yeah, it's got some pretty decent market symmetry. Actually, I don't really like this that much. Let's do monthly here. Mm. Sorry about that. Found my GAN. Um, I ended up doing only two week and it's 360 and 10 from this bottom over here from COVID. You can see that what it has been doing is it basically got rejected here at the arc, pushed through the arc over here, and it got to the next arc over here, had a hard time breaking about, broke through it. Right now we're getting rejected both at the 1.414 as well as at the horizontal gain level almost perfectly, right? It was able to break above this and it might hover here for a little bit longer for a few weeks before breaking up above. It was able to break up above for that. It's probably going to push through 1.618. It's probably going to push for even a little bit higher through the arc over here, maybe around 6700, depending on where it hits. And depends on how far, how parabolic it goes, it could end up hitting some of the other targets up here around the horizontal line over here, or even the arc up here. There's no guarantee it's going to do that. So you can potentially consider if you bought all the way down here, and you've just been holding, or if you bought this horizontal line uh, zone over here, and you're just holding, I would probably start taking profits maybe somewhere at these GAN levels over here one at a time. Right, that's kind of what I would see now. If my strategy ended up being like the bee's knees and it just keeps on going to like you know five figures and things like that, then I'm sorry. You can always leave a little bit of moon back and just kind of see what what it does. Maybe there is a super cycle. I don't know. I all I know is I see trend exhaustion, and uh, I I'm I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious. That's all I'm gonna say. So um, that's pretty much it. But if you want to extrapolate and look at what Bitcoin does, and you want to take um, profit whenever Bitcoin tops. It's always tough to do, but there are some tools 
one is you just see how um, you know whether or not it breaks if it makes multiple candles above the upper Bollinger Band, which we still haven't really done yet. And if the low Bollinger Band actually expands downwards, that's when you know that the bull market has started, right? And I keep on dragging. So the, the peak of the low Bollinger Band here is around April 2021. Theoretically, that was probably the top for Bitcoin around April 2021. That was a little bit of a higher, um, a, a little bit of higher high, but it was a little bit of exhausted higher high, right? Theoretically, the April 2021 was probably the peak. So you can look at the low Bollinger Band, you can see when it starts to contract, and you might want to say, hey, you know, maybe that's the area where I really want to start kind of starting profit, right? There's the cycle before that, same thing, low Bollinger Band on the monthly, where they end up peaking around January 2018, right? So if you were seeing that, okay, it's starting to really exhaust. I'm seeing the exhaustion here on January 2018, and exit to January 2018, you're exiting here, right? So that's one thing to kind of consider in terms of the Bollinger Band um, strategy. The other one is you can also look at like the, um, let me see here. Yeah, the NVRVC score. There's something called NVRVC score on the monthly. It has to hit like around five for you to be like really toppy. We're far from that right now. There's also something called the uh, the Pi cycle indicator, um, which is gonna be somewhere, where are you? I used the one that's from Shark Tank. Pi cycle indicator. I, I swear I have it somewhere. Shark Tank, right? It's the Pi cycle prediction. Where is it top? It tops whenever you end up having a cross, right? It was really revised. It was it was really devised from like 2018, and it used these formulas in terms of moving averages, things like that. And basically, if these two lines touches, that's when the top. It it timed the top here back in April 2021, and it would have been great if you were sold over there and just not not to not look back, right? Even though you might a little bit like FOMO here a little bit on when it makes a little bit of higher high, but I think you would have been fine if you just kind of sold there. We're not really anywhere near the pie cycle top. Um, and I mean, I don't think that the projected date is correct, but we're, we're nowhere near the high cycle top at this point. Um, just kind of uh, give you a little bit of idea. So I'm not really thinking about taking profits so, so far. So you can either take profits when you look at my strategy I and mean, as you look at Bitcoin based on these indicators. Um, and uh, that's one way to also kind of handle that too. Those are kind of my two cents in terms of micro strategy, in terms of what's going to happen next, in terms of what I might potentially do. None of this is financial advice. All of this is just based on patterns and based on what I'm seeing, based on education, based on tools out there. Um, feel free to um, you know do whatever you want with the tool. Um, confirm it, disconfirm it, argue it. I don't care. Um, just wanted to talk to you about kind of what my thoughts are in terms of uh, micro strategy. That's all. All right, take care. Bye.